All right. Uh, ready for a word? All right. There is a word. There is a word. Father, we come to thee in the matchless name of our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, Father. I pray that none of it will be seen and that I'll be hidden behind the cross of Calvary. I pray that not my will be done, but that your will be done. It is in Jesus' name, Father. And also we pray, Father, for Brother Gordon Carpenter. Father, we pray that you remember our brother up in Las Vegas right now. You know all about him, what he's dealing with. We know that you're able to strengthen, you're able to heal, Father. We pray, Father, for the Brown and the Long and the Robert and the Barber family. Pray that you be a great God of comfort to them. Thank you for Brother Robert and Sister Evelyn being here today. Comfort them, strengthen them during this time. We pray for Sister Patricia Turner, Father, who might even be tuned in via Ustream. I pray that you will bless. Touch that back in a mighty way. It is in Jesus' name and God's people said, Amen. Amen. If you could stand and meet us in the Old New Testament book of Hebrews. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, we're going to look at verses 1 through 3. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verses 1 through 3, has our thoughts. And Nicole, as always, is so kind to put the words on the screen there. I want you to pause for the cause and give Nicole a round of applause. I want you to pause for the cause and give Tammy and Crystal a round of applause and Leroy for the Ustream Media Team. We thank God for that. Reading from the King James Version, it says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against him lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds you may be seated may the Lord add a blessing to the reading hearing and the doing of his precious and holy word today brothers and sisters we want to speak from the subject basic building blocks of the ultimate winning team basic building blocks of the ultimate winning team basic building blocks of the ultimate winning team as we know today at 3 30 p.m super bowl 53 will take place and it will feature the los angeles rams against the new england patriots we see that uh this is uh one that will be watched by millions of people throughout this land and world and i want to let you know that the super bowl commercials only 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 cost five million dollars for a 30 second slot i remember when they were a couple of hundred thousand but now they're only five million dollars for you big spenders and big ballers and shot callers that are in the audience you can get you a, a, a TV commercial if you want to. For the next three hours, three plus hours, when they go through the Super Bowl, houses will be divided. Paychecks will be lost and friends won't speak to each other for a couple of weeks thereafter. Manical behavior will be displayed in the fans. And, 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 and guess what? It's all over a prolate spheroid. Let me say that again. A prolate, a P-R-O-L-A-T-E, next word, spheroid, S-P-H-E-R-O-I-D. In other words, it is a three-dimensional shaped thing called a football. That's a, that's a, a prolate spheroid. A football has the geometrical uh, uh, shape of a pig's bladder, hence it is called pig's skin. So how did these two teams, New England and the L.A. Rams, get to the highest game in the, the National Football League? I'm glad you asked. Outside of a controversial call, Brother Red, between the L.A. Rams and the, and, the, and the New England Saints, they got there by fundamental, elementary, simple, or basic plays, Deacon Bell. Now, when you look at the word ultimate, the word ultimate as a noun, it means that something that is happening at the end of a process, it is finality, it is conclusive. And while the winners of today's Super Bowl will lift up and hoist the Vince Lombardi 
trophy, I want to tell you that there is a greater victory than this temporal event that's going to take place at 3.30 p.m. Somebody needs to know that. The ultimate winning team is led by God the Father who serves as the general manager. The Holy Spirit who serves as the coach and leads and guides us along the way. And then God the Son, Jesus, serves as the all-world quarterback. Want somebody to know that the prize is heaven and it is the crown of righteousness which the Lord will give the righteous judge to give those who love him. The L.A. Rams record is 13 and 3 if you don't know. The New England Patriots, Sister Janice, is 11 and 5. But I got to tell you, the ultimate winning team has never, ever lost a game. They've been undefeated for over 2,000 years. <laughs> So what are these basic building blocks of the ultimate winning team? Write this down. Write this down. One, you need supportive fans. You need supportive fans. Secondly, you need solid faith. You need solid faith. Thirdly, you need superior fortitude. Superior fortitude. And Nicole has the three observations there on the board. So let's take a look at the basic building block number one. One is that you need supportive fans. Look what the writer says, wherefore. Wherefore connects us with the prior chapter, chapter 11. Chapter 11 of Hebrews is known as the hall of fame of faith, the hall of faith. And so you have all of these uh, uh, matriarchs and patriarchs that is talked about and how the Lord had used them. And they went through danger seen and unseen and they still stood for the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, wherefore, seeing we are compassed or surrounded about with so great a cloud of, of witness. Got to tell you that fans, fan, you know, is a noun and it is a, an enthusiastic devotee uh, it is an ardent a strong uh, admirer fan is short for the word fanatical you know that right it's short for the word fanatical and you don't think people fanatical a grown man that will paint his body blue and yellow yeah or paint their head red white and blue fanatics fans that just go off and do a little bit of everything you see, the book of Hebrew was written to a group of Christians who had converted from what is known as Judaism, the religion of the Jews, following the law, and they converted to Christianity. And they were under serious persecution. And as a result of that, the writer served to encourage them. Now, when he's talking about the cloud of witness here, these are, again, the Christians who died that we saw in chapter 11 of, of uh, Hebrews. Our English word where we get the word martyr from comes directly from the Greek word that has to do with witness. These heroes of faith, if you will, they're not spectators. They're not sitting up in heaven and looking down on us on earth as some people would try to make you to believe. But no, what he's saying is that their example is for us to follow. Their lives of faith and through endurance has a high standard for us to duplicate. Yeah, we can be sure that these hall of fame of faith, these heroes of faith in, are in heaven. And one thing I do know that they do know about what's happening here is that when a person comes to the Lord, they rejoice. Luke 15 and 7 says that there I say unto you, this is Jesus, that, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented than over 99 just persons that needed not repentance. I praise and I thank God. And I got to tell somebody that I believe that the church today in 2019, we need folks who are sold out. We need people who are radical. We need people who are turned up. We need people who are amped up. We need people who are lit. We need people who are fired up for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, sometimes uh, I'm not saying none of you here, but sometimes some of us come to church in the words of, Janet Jackson, what have you done for me lately? He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. And as a result of that, I'm going to praise him in my car. I'm going to praise him in the parking lot. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise him in the, in the restroom. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. I got to take a 
sip of my yak up in here. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Gotta wet the whisker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We now to make some noise for the Lord Jesus Christ. Churches, sometimes we are too quiet for the Lord. But if I told somebody I'm going to bless you with a trip to Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm going to give you some front seats that, for the Super Bowl, you'd be, yes! And then the airline stewards had to say, sir, you got to calm down, else we're going to put you off the plane. And yet, when we look at everything that God has done for us, and we want to, none of you here, none of you here, but sometimes we just want to sit down. And we just want to sit down. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall and Humpty Dumpty had a big fall and all of the king horses and all of the king's men, they couldn't put Humpty back together again. But Jesus can put us together when we fall down. Because when we fall down, we get up. We get up, we get up, we get up, we get up. Look at that. So, so, so again, we're not talking about a stadium of folks looking down on heaven and watching what we're doing. We're saying that we have an example of men and women who have kept the faith and now they're going on to be with the Lord. And we have an example. We have a template. We have a pattern that we can follow after. It might be a family member that went on to be with the Lord. They served the Lord while they were here. And now they're in heaven getting their reward. And we thank God about that. Hallelujah. So, so again, you need some fans. You need somebody that's going to motivate you. You know, when you stand up in church as a preacher and you forget what you're supposed to be saying. And people say, that's all right, baby. We love you. You're doing a good job. And you know in yourself you're not doing a good job. But the church will still encourage you. Those are the kind of fans you need. The babies get up here and they, they might forget their words, Tracy. But say, baby, you're doing a good job just for standing up. Might give you the microphone to sing and you may forget your, your, what, what, what voice you're supposed to be in, whatever level you're supposed to be in. Right? And they say, you're doing a good job, Pastor Ed. I, I, I love the Lord. He, he, he heard my cry. Uh, and it, you know the, and folks just back you up right you need fanatical people that's going to go to the mat for you so, so that's one thing and then he says let us lay aside every weight you see they had what was known as the Isthmian game the Isthmian game it was a precursor to the Olympic games as we know today and often when those champion runners were trained they would put on a, 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 a weight belt and they would run with those weight belts. And I got to tell somebody that those weight belts, they do work. Is that right, Brother Robert Brown? You run with those weight belts on and then you take them off and you're a little more swifter. When I was training for my second marathon, I would run around with a 30-pound weight belt on. And I'd be running and, 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 and just running and people looking like I was crazy. But I got to tell you, it made me a little bit stronger. Imagine Usain, Usain, Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt is my man from Jamaica. I love his... Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put him up there. Usain Bolt, man. Got game. Imagine him, Sister Addie, running a race with a 50-pound weight on. He probably would still beat some of, some of me. Not you, but he would still beat some of us in a 100-yard dash. But I guarantee you it will slow him down. And so there are weights, brothers and sisters, that hinder our spiritual progress there are things that are entangle us there are things that restrict us and sometimes it might be people that we run with sometimes it might be our attitude sometimes it might be our job and our position on our jobs and sometimes it might be getting a little lazy and comfortable in the things that we have acquired sometimes it might be our phones that we can't put down sometimes it might be the television screen that we're always watching there are things that will slow us down and sometimes there's these things called isms and racism and sexism and classism and all of these isms that will weigh us down we gotta shake off some things we got to unbuckle some things and Get unrestricted and uncumbered. Look what he says. He says, he says that we got the we got the, the, the fans, we got we got we got a, a witness, if you will. We, we we laid aside every sin and weight, if you will. And then he says, in the sin. Notice he talks about the sin. 
Specifically, the writer was talking about the sin of apostasy, that there were those that were going through Sister Bailey. These were Christians that, that, that were no longer, they were Jews that became Christians, and they were being persecuted, and they almost gave up. And they wanted to go back to, uh, uh, against God and go to the religion of the Jews. And he was encouraging them not to do so. Don't fall away. And I want to say to somebody today, don't fall away from the Lord. It seems like God may have not come for, uh, through for you. It seems like, you know, you may have lost your home. You may have lost a loved one. You may have been uh, 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 your family drama or whatever. Don't give up on God because God will not give up on you. And what God has for you is for you. And God will make a way for you out of nowhere. He will strengthen you. He will heal you. He will deliver you Amen. then he goes on to say he says he says we're talking about hebrews 12 and 1 he says and then run the uh, run with patience the race that is set before us when he's talking about set be, beset us uh, the things that would easily uh, beset us he's talking about the sin that is around us that standing around us and i got to tell you if you haven't paid attention sin is still alive sin is still happening sin is happening covertly that is under the covers and it's happening overtly out in the open there are things that when we came up that we have wouldn't have never seen on television but it's happening every day now i'm old enough to remember deacon james at midnight at midnight when the tv went off anybody remember that don't put your hands up don't don't let them see how old <laughs> But I remember when at midnight in the team and all of that snow would just come up. We need some more of those FCC, federal communications type of, 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 of things to help us out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Stay with me. Stay with me. Hallelujah. He said, and let us run. Let us run. And when he's talking about let us run, let us run. Hallelujah. When Paul is saying, I mean, when the writer is saying here, let us run, he's talking in the Greek tense. Let us continue to run. Let us continue to run with patience, with patience, the race that's before us. Got to tell you that the Christian race is a marathon. It is not a sprint. It is a marathon. And one thing I learned about running marathons is that if you learn to pace yourself and you learn to breathe correctly, you will get through 26.1 miles. But if you take out like a jackrabbit, you take out like you all that in a bag of chips, you take off like, hey, you got it all together, you take off like, hey, I'm better than everybody else, you're going to get maybe the five mile five or seven and you're going to be, what was I thinking? I can't believe this. But I'm telling you, if you run with race, with patience, got to tell you, we all need supportive fans in our lives. Church is a great place to meet supportive fans. It takes a village to raise a Christian. It takes a village to raise a Christian. You might mess up, but I got to tell you, you can get up. Our relatives and our friends, they believed in Jesus' atoning work, and as a result of that, God has blessed them. So again, you need supportive fans. You need folks that are willing to stand up for the Lord Jesus the Christ. As I said last week, I'd rather stand with Jesus and be judged by the world than to stand with the world and to be judged by Jesus. I'm standing with the Lord Jesus Christ. Second, second building block. You need solid faith. You need solid faith. We as Christians, we talk a lot about faith. Let me just say that we talk a lot about faith. But if the truth be told, <clears throat> some of us Christians live with little teeny weeny faith. Some of us Christians have what is known as the rabbit hole faith, right? Rabbit hole faith. You know, as long as everything is going good, you praising the Lord and you lifting your hands or whatever, right? But the moment an issue a challenge come on, we go back into the rabbit hole. They say, what happened to Pastor Ed? Man, we ain't seen him in six months. Brother used to pray. Brother used to preach. Brother used to teach or whatever. Oh, man, I'm just going through a little something. I got a little situation in my life, right? You know that situation, what you need to do? You need to give it to the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to cast all of your cares, all of your anxieties, all your worries, all your stress, all your mess, all your hurts, all your pain, all your shames, your disappointments, your heartaches on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he cares for you. Faith church is trusting God when it just don't make sense. It just don't make sense. Lord, you want me to do what? Say what? It just don't 
makes sense. Yes, faith is necessary to do business in the kingdom of God. Look at the verse 2. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Some of us have solid faith in the stock market. Some of us have solid faith in social media. Some of us have solid faith in simple math. Some of us have solid faith in silly mess. Some of us have solid faith in spiritual miming. Spiritual miming is when you're just going through the motions, right? You plan, you know, you do the hokey pokey, you got one foot in, you got one foot out, you do the hokey pokey, and you turn yourself for a while. You know what I mean, right? No, it's no time for no spiritual miming. If our faith is not on the person Jesus Christ or in the person Jesus Christ, it's on sinking sin. Hallelujah. He says in that second verse, looking. The Greek word for looking is aphroroe. Af aphroroe. It means to see. It means undivided. It means fixed. It means to, to stare or to gaze upon something or someone. This afternoon, Kiara, millions of people will be watching the Super Bowl. And they will be very excited. But who will look for Jesus today? <clears throat> it says, looking unto Jesus, it says that he is the author. That is, he is the beginner. He is the pioneer and the finisher or the completer of our faith. Let me tell you about Jesus' race. Jesus' race began in heaven. And then it took a circuitous, a circuitous course all the way down to Bethlehem. <laughs> to Bethlehem when he was in a little manger if you will and then from there it went over to Gethsemane and, and from Gethsemane it went over into the tomb and from the tomb it took him over back to heaven where he rose from the dead and I got to tell you that I want to follow a leader who got up and someone who is victorious you see Jesus kept his eyes fixed on the coming glory when all the saints will, of the redeemed will be gathered with him eternally says yeah looking into Jesus who for the joy that was set before him imagine if we got a, if we had a little more joy in our lives yeah 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 some churches you go to and it look like everybody had a little prune juice yeah 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 man what if we had a little more joy if we knew that the joy of the Lord was my strength if we realize that, that that joy is something that the world didn't give to me and the world can't take it away from me. If I realize in the midst of my pain that I could still have joy. When the doctors have given up on me, I can still have joy. When they're about to lay me off on my job, I can still get joy. When the paycheck has not come through, I can still have joy. When my children ain't acting right, I can still have joy. When a loved one has passed away, I can still have joy. When it seems like I'm going down real fast, I can still lift up my eyes unto the Lord and have joy. So look at this. I want you to, I want you to capture this. It says, it's for the joy that was set before him he endured some of us don't want to endure anything we don't want to endure a few minutes of prayer we don't want to endure a few uh, moments of the word we don't want to endure Sunday school we don't want to endure taking our time with someone not, not, none of you here but there are people like that in this world they don't want to endure nothing we want microwavable Christianity and I don't even want to wait 30 seconds, Sister Regina. I want 10 seconds, and I need an answer, and I need it now. Or else, Lord, I'm turning my back on you. Some of us have done things like that. But some things we got to endure. We got to push through. We got to know that it is God who's working through us. He endured. Look what did he endure. He the, the, uh, endured the cross, the despising of the shame. Hallelujah. Even a despising of the shame. Let me pause for the cause to let somebody know that Jesus went through a, a, a shameful death. Crucifixion was the worst type of death that anyone can go through. Not only was it painful, but it was very shameful. It, 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 was, it was meant to humiliate and torture the person who was being crucified. Also, you should know that it was relegated or it was only applied to slaves and non-roman citizens 
Yet Jesus still went through it. And Jesus treated the shame of the cross as if it was nothing but a chicken wing. He said it ain't nothing because he knew that he was going to get up. Philippians 2 and 8 says, in being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Humility is just simply power under control. Jesus had the ability to come down from the cross if he chose to do so. Because he loved us so much, Sister Lisa, he was willing to stay on the old rugged cross for us. He humbled himself and he became obedient. Some of us don't like to be obedient. Yeah, some of us are hard-headed. Some of us want things our way. And we forget about the God's way. And then we wonder why when we got oops upside our head, why did this happen to us? Because we were not obedient to what God told us to do. He says, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, and currently is set down at the right hand of God. Jesus is in a position of authority, making intercession on our behalf. And I thank God for that. You see, with King Jesus as the object of our faith, Sister Amber, we can win our battle over worry. With Jesus as the object of our faith, we can win our battle over weight. With Jesus as the object of our faith, we can win our battle over feeling worthless. With Jesus as the object of our faith, we can win our battle over weariness. Well, hallelujah. With Jesus as the object of our faith, we can face our fears. With Jesus as the object of our faith, we can face our failures. With Jesus as the object of our faith, we can face our shame. With Jesus as the object of our faith, we can face our pain. Whatever it is, we can face it with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So you need to have some fans. You need to have solid faith. In our last building block, to be on the winning team, you need to have superior fortitude. Don't let that big old word run you by. Yes, we had books at Compton High School. Yes, we learned about etymology. Yes, we learned about words and things of that nature. And I learned that fortitude has to do with the strength of mind. In other words, it's having guts to stand up. It's like when the homies don't want to run out on a mama's child and that mama get out that car, Brendan, and say, y'all better get on back out of here. And that mama's not afraid. She has the fortitude to go and get her children. What is your fortitude level like? What are you standing on? Hallelujah. Verse number three, he says, for consider him. Consider means to compare. It means to ponder. It means to weigh. It means to look at, if you will. Hallelujah. The believing Jews, again, they were getting fatigued. And somebody might be getting fatigued and weary in your walk. But I want to tell you to keep looking to Jesus because he is the cure for our hesitation. He is the cure for our doubt. He has the key to victory. But, but, but I want to let you know that he's been through something worse than we will ever go through. He says, consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners. Contradiction has to do with oppositions. In other words, the haters that was there, Brother Dwayne, they were hating against Jesus. And I want you to know that he also faced temporary rejection while he was on that old rugged cross from his father who wouldn't look at him on sin. But Jesus kept his eyes of faith because the joy that was set before him. And then he goes on to say, he says, lest we be wearied and we faint in our minds. Hallelujah. I thank God for that. Jesus knew that he was going to come out the grave on the other side. He knew that, Sister Michelle. So he was excited about that. And I got to tell you, when you look at everything that we're going through, it doesn't compare. Galatians 6 and 9 tells us, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As I get ready to go to my seat, let me just close by telling you a story about how the ultimate team can really work. 2015, I was running the Count Pendleton Mud Run. It was a bad run. It was, it was a bad run. It was crazy, right? I'm probably in there somewhere. Count Pendleton Mud Run. Six miles. I'm used to running 26 miles. This was six miles. We are doing lunges for like 30 or 40 yards at a time. You're carrying a car battery for 10, 10 yards. You're running with a car battery. You're climbing over 20 feet walls of ropes and things of that nature, whatever. Now, 
Now, what was that? Four, going on four years ago. So I was 56 years old when I did this. And we're running through, through all kind of stuff. Had to go through five foot rivers and lakes and things of that nature trying to get through. And I got to tell you, brothers and sisters, I turned this corner and Leroy, I could see the finish line. I was almost finished. And I got spent. S-P-E-N-T. I just got tired. I said, man, I don't know if I can do it. And I just started walking like this, trying to get to the finish line. And sitting up in the stands was a guy named Alan Lee Puckett, Deacon Tillman Puckett Jr.'s son, Sister Myrtle Jones' nephew. He was sitting up in the stand. He said, you can do it, Ed! And all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, man, somebody know me out here. And I got a little pep in my step. And Nicole, I started to run, and I ran all the way to the end. I went up to Alan. I hugged him with mud and everything. I said, Alan, your word, your voice gave me encouragement. I want to let somebody know that God is saying you might be running through the mud. You might be through the mud of funky finances. You might be the mud of family drama. You might be the mud of pain. You might be the mud of discouragement. But I want you to know that God, Jesus is saying, you can do it. You can do it if you trust him. You can do it if you lift up your eyes and to the hills from whence cometh all of your help because all of your help coming from the Lord. You can do it because you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who gives you the strength. You can do it because with God all things are possible. You can do it because he made you as the head and not the tail. You can do it because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You can do it because Christ Jesus got up. And because he got up, we can get up too. So I want everyone to be part of the ultimate winning team. Jesus gave us the victory. We have the victory. And I want to let somebody know, on the, based on the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus of Christ, the blood still works. Hallelujah. He woke us up. Started us on our way. Get your praise on. Get your praise on. I thank God for that. That God has given me another opportunity. Another day. Another time. And as I told you guys earlier, I'm looking forward to my 60th birthday on Wednesday. I thank God because I'm not supposed to be here. I should have been one of those statistics. I should have been kicked under prison. I should have been shot at. I've been, I've been shot at. I've had all kinds of things happen. But God still kept me and I know that I'm part of the ultimate winning team that if he takes me out even today I'm going home to be with the Lord Jesus the Christ ain't he all right he's all right hallelujah but the Lord bless you in a mighty way we want to give somebody if you would close your eyes bow your heads on this summer day super so Super Bowl Sunday a few years ago I remember when this young man right here Deacon Leroy Lewis came and fellowship with us on a Super Bowl Sunday. That brother hasn't stopped coming back since. You may have a Deacon Leroy Lewis moment today where to join the ultimate winning team where you can get in a position where you can be built up, you can learn how to fight the three enemies, the flesh, the devil, and the, and the world, where you can be loved on. Somebody may be calling, someone, someone, the Lord is knocking on your door today, and he may be directing you to the Hope in Christ Community Church. And as I always say, I'm not talking about joining religion. I'm talking about a relationship with Jesus. On this Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, February the 3rd, 2019, if you're here today, I'm asked if you would raise your hand.